This video demonstrates how to set up and perform X-ray imaging of the upper extremities. In this video, the first projection for each body region will be described in full, and subsequent radiographic projections will be described briefly, highlighting the differences only. Equipment required includes the following. A radiographic table, upright and table bucky, a selection of different cassette sizes. The selection depends on the department protocol and may include 8 by 10 inch, 10 by 12 inch, and 14 by 17 inch cassettes. Protective lead shields and a lead apron. Anatomical positioning aids such as weights. An assortment of lead markers. A variety of radiographic accessories like radiolucent sponges, compensating filters, and sandbags an X-ray generator and X-ray tube housing assembly, a control panel located behind an appropriate lead-lined barrier, and a computer radiography system. To obtain a radiograph of the second finger in the PA projection, select an 8 by 10 inch cassette and place it on the table. Proceed to set the source to image receptor distance, or SID, to 40 inches. Turn on the collimation light and align the central ray to the center of the cassette. Select the non-bucky setting and the small focal spot on the control panel. Set the exposure parameters to between 50 and 55 kilovolts, or kV, and between 2 and 4 milliampere seconds, or MAS. Ask the patient to sit alongside the end of the table and position the protective lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Assist the patient to flex their elbow to an angle of 90 degrees, supporting their elbow, forearm, and hand on the tabletop. Place their hand palm side down on the surface of the cassette. Center and align their second finger with the cassette, separating the adjoining fingers so that the soft tissues are not superimposed. Align the central ray to the proximal interphalangeal joint of the same finger. Collimate the light field to include the phalanges, the metacarpal phalangeal MCP joint, and the distal metacarpal of the affected finger. Position the right lead marker within the light field. Move behind the protective lead barrier. Check that the exposure factors are appropriate for the patient and, if necessary, make any adjustments. Expose the cassette by pressing the prep button and, when ready, press the exposure button. Remove the cassette and process it while preparing for the next projection. For an oblique projection, place a second 8 by 10 inch cassette on the tabletop. Reposition the patient's arm. Rotate their hand and forearm 45 degrees laterally. Separate their fingers and support them on a stepped 45 degree angle radiolucent sponge. Align the finger with the center of the cassette. Position the central ray over the proximal interphalangeal joint. Collimate to include the same structures as for the PA projection and expose the cassette. For a lateral projection, rotate the patient's forearm and hand medially, resting the finger on its lateral aspect on an 8 by 10 inch cassette. Center the central ray to the interphalangeal joint. Collimate the light field as in the PA and PAO projection and expose the cassette. Review the images for the three projections. To image any of the other fingers, use a similar technique. To obtain a radiographic projection of the thumb in the AP projection, begin by asking the patient to place their hand palm down on an 8 by 10 inch cassette. Rotate their hand and forearm medially until the posterior aspect of the thumb and the first metacarpal are centered to and in contact with the cassette. Extend their fingers and ask the patient to hold the fingers away from the palm using the other hand. Center the central ray to the first MCP joint. Collimate the light field to include the distal and proximal phalanges and the first metacarpal and the first MCP joint. Expose the cassette. To obtain an oblique projection of the thumb, ask the patient to place their hand, palm down with their thumb abducted, on a second 8 by 10 inch cassette. Align their thumb with the center of the cassette. 
ulnar deviation may be applied to the wrist to extend other fingers out of the way. Center the central ray to the MCP joint. Collimate the light field the same as for the AP thumb projection and expose the cassette. To obtain a lateral projection of the thumb, extend the patient's forearm and pronate their hand. Abduct the thumb and flex the other fingers to bring the lateral aspect of the thumb in contact with the cassette. Center the central ray to the MCP joint. Collimate the light field the same as for the AP thumb projection and expose the cassette. Review the images from the three projections. To obtain a radiograph of the hand in the PA projection, begin by placing a 10 by 12 inch cassette on the end of the radiographic table. Set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray to the middle of the cassette. Select the non-bucky setting and the small focal spot. Set the exposure parameters to between 50 and 55 kilovolts and between 3 and 4 milliampere seconds. Ask the patient to sit alongside the end of the table. Position the lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Ask the patient to bend their elbow to a 90-degree angle and place their hand, palm down, on the cassette. Align their hand with the center of the cassette and separate the fingers. Center the central ray to the third MCP joint. Collimate to include the bony and soft tissue anatomy of the fingers, hand and wrist, and the distal radius and ulna. Place the correct lead marker in the upper corner of the image and instruct the patient to remain still. Stand behind the protective lead barrier and expose the cassette. Remove the cassette and process it while preparing for the next projection. To obtain a PA oblique projection, rotate the patient's hand, wrist, and forearm laterally 45 degrees. Support the palmar aspect of the wrist, hand, and fingers on a radiolucent sponge. Center the central ray on the third MCP joint. Collimate to include the bony and soft tissue anatomy of the fingers, hand, and wrist, including the distal radius and ulna, and expose the cassette. With a new cassette in place, obtain a fan lateral projection of the hand. Rotate the hand and forearm laterally until the hand is in the true lateral position. The ulnar aspect of the hand remains in contact with the cassette. Assist the patient to separate their fingers in a fan shape. Center the central ray to the second MCP joint. Collimate the light field to the appropriate anatomy. Expose and process the cassette. Review the images of the three projections. To obtain a PA projection of the wrist, begin by placing an 8 by 10 inch cassette on the tabletop. Proceed to set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray perpendicular to the cassette. Set the appropriate exposure parameters. Extend the upper limb and ask the patient to flex their elbow 90 degrees. Align their wrist with the center of the cassette. Pronate the patient's hand and place it in a loose fist position on the cassette. Palpate the ulnar styloid process to confirm that it is in profile. Center the central ray to the midcarpal area. Collimate to include the distal radius and ulna, carpal bones, proximal and mid-metacarpals, as well as the soft tissues of the wrist. Position the lead marker appropriately. Move behind the lead barrier and adjust the exposure settings if necessary. Prepare and expose the cassette. With a new cassette in place, obtain a PA oblique projection by rotating the patient's wrist and hand laterally with the medial aspect in contact with the cassette. Ask the patient to place their hand in a fist position and angle the wrist 45 degrees medially with the ulna side touching the cassette. Align the central ray and center it on the midcarpal area. Collimate the light field the same as for the PA wrist and expose the cassette. Place another cassette to obtain a lateral projection of the wrist. Rotate the patient's forearm laterally so that their thumb is uppermost. Gently palpate the radial and ulnar styloid processes to confirm superimposition. Align and center the central ray and collimate the light field the same as for the PA projection. Expose the cassette. Review the images of the wrist.
To obtain a radiograph of the forearm in the AP projection, place a 14 by 17 inch cassette on the tabletop. Set the SID to 40 inches. Select the non-bucky setting and the small focal spot on the machine. Set the exposure parameters to between 55 and 60 kV and 3 and 4 MAS. Ask the patient to sit alongside the end of the table. Position a protective shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Ask the patient to fully extend their arm on the cassette with the posterior aspect of their humerus and forearm on the table. The patient may have to lean laterally for alignment. Align the forearm with the center of the cassette. Palpate the humeral epicondyles to ensure that they are equidistant from the cassette. Center the central ray to the mid-forearm and between the wrist and elbow joints. Collimate the light field to include both the wrist and elbow and the sides of the forearm. Place the appropriate lead marker within the collimation field. Move behind the lead barrier and adjust the exposure settings if necessary. Expose and process the cassette. Using another cassette, obtain a lateral projection of the forearm. Assist the patient to flex their elbow to an angle of 90 degrees. Align and center the forearm to the image receptor. Position the patient's forearm, wrist, and hand in the lateral position so that their thumb is uppermost. Palpate the humeral epicondyles and the radial and ulnar styloid processes to confirm superimposition. Collimate as for the AP projection of the forearm and expose the cassette. To obtain a radiograph of the elbow in the AP projection, select a 10 by 12 inch cassette and place it on the tabletop. Set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray perpendicular to the cassette. Select the non-bucky setting and the small focal spot on the control panel. Set the exposure parameters to between 55 and 60 kV and 4 and 6 MAS. Ask the patient to sit at the end of the table. Protect their reproductive organs with a lead shield. Ask the patient to extend their arm fully, resting the posterior aspect of their arm and forearm on the cassette with their elbow in the center. The patient may have to roll laterally to bring the hand and forearm into supination. Center the central ray to the midpoint of the elbow joint. Collimate the light field to include the sides of the patient's elbow joint, distal humerus, and the proximal radius and ulna. Position the lead marker appropriately. Check the exposure technique and expose the cassette. For a lateral elbow projection, place a second 10 by 12 inch cassette on the tabletop. Radiolucent sponges can be used to elevate the cassette to enable the patient to place their forearm, elbow, and lower humerus at the same level on the cassette. Assist the patient to place their arm on the cassette, flexing their elbow 90 degrees and aligning it with the center of the cassette. Rotate their hand and wrist into the lateral position. Center the central ray to the midpoint of the elbow joint. Collimate the light field the same as for the AP projection. Expose the cassette. To obtain an oblique projection of the elbow with lateral rotation, place a new cassette on the tabletop. Ask the patient to extend their arm fully, resting the posterior aspect of their humerus and forearm on the cassette. Roll the patient's arm laterally until their humerus, elbow joint, and forearm are at a 45-degree angle to the cassette. Center the central ray to the midpoint of the elbow. Collimate to include the same anatomy as the AP and lateral elbow projections and expose the cassette. Review the images for these projections. To obtain a radiograph of the humerus in the AP projection, begin by selecting a 14 by 17 inch cassette and orientate it lengthwise in the upright bucky. Set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray perpendicular to the image receptor. Considering the size of the patient's upper humerus and shoulder area, select the upright bucky and the small focal spot. Set the exposure parameters to between 65 and 70 kV and 7 and 10 MAS. Ask the patient to stand in front of the image receptor with the posterior aspect of their humerus against the image receptor. Place a protective lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs.
Move the affected arm slightly away from the patient's body and supinate the hand. Align the humerus with the center of the cassette. Center the central ray to the mid-shaft of the humerus. Collimate to include the sides of the humerus and both the elbow and shoulder joints of the arm. Place the appropriate lead marker within the collimation field. Stand behind the protective lead barrier. Check that the settings are appropriate for the patient's body habitus and, if necessary, make any adjustments. Instruct the patient to hold their breath and keep still. Expose the cassette by pressing the PrEP button. Then, when ready, press the Exposure button. Once the exposure is completed, inform the patient that they may relax and breathe normally. Process the cassette while preparing for the next projection. To obtain a lateral projection of the humerus, place another 14 by 17 inch cassette lengthwise in the upright bucky. Pronate the patient's hand and internally rotate their arm. Align the central ray to the midpoint of the humerus. Collimate as for the AP projection and expose the cassette. Review the images for both projections. To obtain a radiograph of the shoulder girdle in the AP projection with the humerus placed in external rotation, select a 10 by 12 inch cassette and place it in the upright bucky. Set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray perpendicular to the image receptor. Select the upright bucky setting and the small focal spot. Set the exposure parameters to between 65 and 70 kV and 12 and 16 MAS. Ask the patient to stand against the upright bucky with the posterior aspect of their shoulder in contact with the image receptor. Externally rotate their arm to position their hand in supination and move their arm just away from their body. Position a lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Center the glenohumeral joint to the image receptor. Center the central ray one inch inferior to the coracoid process. Collimate the light field to include the patient's proximal humerus, upper scapula, and the lateral half of the clavicle. Place the appropriate lead marker within the collimation field. Proceed to make any adjustments in the exposure settings. Instruct the patient to keep still and hold their breath. Prep the machine and expose the cassette. Ask the patient to relax and breathe normally. Remove and process the cassette. To obtain an AP projection with internal rotation, assist the patient to medially rotate their arm until the back of their hand faces their body. The central ray and collimation is the same as for the AP shoulder with external rotation. Check the exposure settings and expose the cassette. Review the images for both projections. To obtain a radiograph of the clavicle in the AP upright projection, select a 10 by 12 inch cassette and place it in the upright bucky. Set the SID to 40 inches and align the central ray perpendicular to the image receptor. Set the exposure parameters to between 60 and 70 kV and 12 and 16 MAS. Ask the patient to stand with the posterior aspect of their shoulder against the image receptor. Position the protective lead shield over the front of the pelvic area. Ask the patient to look straight ahead. Check that their shoulders are symmetrical to the image receptor. Center the central ray to the mid-shaft of the clavicle and adjust the upright bucky to the central ray. Collimate the light field to include the sternoclavicular joint, the clavicle, and the acromioclavicular joint. Place a left lead marker above the patient's left shoulder within the field of collimation. Move behind the lead barrier and check the exposure factors, making any necessary adjustments appropriate for the patient's age and body habitus. Ask the patient to hold their breath and keep still. Expose the cassette and ask the patient to relax and breathe normally. Process the cassette while preparing for the next projection. For an AP axial projection, angle the central ray 15 to 30 degrees towards the patient's head centered over the mid-shaft of the clavicle. Check that the patient is in the same position as they were for the AP clavicle projection. Move the upright bucky upwards to align the central ray. Expose the cassette and review all images. To obtain a radiograph of the acromioclavicular joints, or AC joints, 
Begin by selecting a 14 by 17 inch cassette oriented crosswise in the upright bucky. Both AC joints are imaged together for comparison. Set the SID to 72 inches. Set the exposure factors to between 60 and 70 kV and 12 and 16 MAS. Select a small focal spot and the upright bucky. Ask the patient to stand against the upright bucky facing forwards with the posterior aspect of their shoulders in contact with the upright bucky. Position the lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Check that the mid-sagittal plane is at the center of the IR and that the IR is at the level of the AC joints. Ask the patient to relax their arms by their side. Center the central ray to the mid-sagittal plane at the level of the AC joints. Collimate the light field to include both AC joints and the surrounding soft tissue of the shoulders. Place the appropriate right or left lead marker. Ask the patient to remain still and hold their breath on expiration. Expose and process the cassette. For the weight-bearing projection, the patient remains in the same position and is given an 8 to 10 pound weight to hold in each hand. Confirm that the collimation and central ray are positioned as for the non-weight-bearing projection and place a weight-bearing marker in the collimation field. Instruct the patient to relax their shoulders and arms and let the weights pull their arms down. Expose and process the cassette. Perform image analysis on the images obtained.